Hey y'all and welcome again to Semino Cycles. Now you may be wondering, what is this massive pile of stuff next to me? And it's not even all in the entire shot, but you can see we have quite a pile of stuff. And today we're gonna do a brief overview of the gear that I'm going to be taking with me to Sturgis this year. Now, just starting with some of the stuff that I wear, this is a Shoei helmet with a uh, chin mount on it. Uh, we use that to mount our camera whenever we're shooting. I've also got a little Bluetooth device right here that uh, can play music, directions, and everything else into the helmet since I do not mount my phone on the handlebars. I do that for personal reasons. I've seen people lose their phones that way, kill their cameras because of the vibration on the handlebars. But that's just what I do. I wear a Shoei RF uh, 1400 helmet that is both Snell and DOT certified just because I really enjoy the helmet. It fits my head good. I don't really have any problems with them. So I have no complaints. As far as gloves go, and some people may call me crazy for this, but this is just a pair of harley davidson leather gloves that i got they're aerated on this side they're leather on this side just a good pair of gloves i happen to pick them up at a pretty decent price again i've been using them for a couple years at this point and uh no real complaints about them they do what i want them to at a good price point now going on to my jacket There are many people that may know this as the uh, Easy Rider motorcycle jacket as evidenced by the uh, red, white, and blue stripes right here. But this is a uh, shot leather jacket uh, made in New York City. Uh, and this particular model, I don't remember the model off the top of my head. I think it was a 641. It was a limited edition jacket, but they make it without the stripes in an incarnation today. I think it's the 641. But you can still buy this jacket. It's a cafe racer style jacket. I like it just because it's tight. It doesn't have anything dangling that can go ahead and hit the tank. And so I'm not, I'm not worried about it whacking into anything. And it's good, thick, sturdy leather jacket. Good piece of gear. Next, I'm going to talk about this. And a lot of people may think that a oh, wallet chain is a stylistic choice. Now, our buddy over at Ripper Chain Co. made this. And uh, the main reason I advocate everywhere, everybody wear some kind of tether for their wallet is you're on a speeding machine going down the road at 70 or 80 miles an hour. And the possibility that your wallet could slip out is there. I mean, it's not impossible so having a wallet chain also when you're going to places you've never been before it keeps it tethered to you and in a worst case scenario uh you may have to use it to ward off something just saying uh this particular one's really heavy and uh if you went to swing in it uh it, it could do something now we're gonna go into what i use to support electronics real quick now Anytime I go out, I carry two portable batteries and uh, you know you can charge these in coffee shops or McDonald's or something like that. But out of this big one, I normally get three or four charges before it goes down to about 50% and then it just maintains at that point. Anytime the load charge goes below 50%, it seems like it doesn't really uh, wanna charge that much. This one, I don't know how well this one's gonna hold up anymore. I got this one while I was uh, forward stationed in South Korea. And the last time I tried to charge something with it, it didn't really wanna work. So I'm gonna have to check that out here in the next couple of days. And uh, maybe get another uh, power bank, just because I like to have two, just so I can charge everything I need and I'm not having to sit at a coffee shop every morning. Uh, after I get out of camp or uh, whatever the case may be on that particular day. 
This is the camera mount that I wear on my helmet. Now this is just a standard waterproof GoPro mount. And people may wonder why I use this particular thing. Well, I dub over all of my riding videos. And the reason I do that is because I can't ever think of anything to say while I'm going down the road. I mean, it's just not how I operate, how I do videos. So I'll film things that I think are very interesting and then go ahead and dub them over later. So that's why I use this enclosed mount. It, it doesn't like run into any issues of maybe uh, damaging the camera due to water or anything like that. And so uh, that's why I use this particular mount in conjunction with this U-mount that's uh, made by Chin Mount. Now, for anybody that uh, was in the military, you may recognize this. The canteen cup, it's uh, it's very useful for a number of things. Uh, you make soup in it, you make coffee in it, you can make a bunch of stuff in it. And normally I just slide a canteen in it to hold water and stuff. Uh, my canteen's packed up, so I don't have it for the video right now. But this canteen cup's very useful and has you know a multitude of uses. And it's real easy to clean out because it's stainless steel. So a uh, good piece of gear doesn't take up a lot of space. Something that I always keep uh, either on my person or in the tour pack is this little mag light. It's very bright, it was very cheap, and uh, it runs on AAA batteries. They tend to last for a pretty long time. So I keep it around. You never know when you're gonna need a light. All right, we're gonna go into uh, camp-related things. This is a three by three meter tarp that's made by uh, d and Hammocks. And uh, it's actually a British piece of gear. It's just a very lightweight tarp. I like it because it has a lot of tie down points. And uh, in my situation, I'm either carrying paracord or small bungee cords. So it's really easy to string this tarp up because of the multiple tie down points on it. The fact it's lightweight, I really like that. And it doesn't take up a ton of space. So it's not an essential piece of gear. Everybody does it different. You could use automotive tarps, I don't care. Uh, this particular item was a gift. So I've been trying to use it, trying to test it. And so far it's been a very useful product. Now, we come to the house, the light fighter tent. Now, a lot of people may say, well, John, this tent is too small. And I'm gonna include a picture of it right here. But the light fighter tent is something I used in the military and it's a piece of gear that I found to be essential. You know, when you're out in the field in the army, this thing's really easy to set up. It's really easy to tear down. It doesn't take up a lot of space. I can literally put it in one of my saddlebags and then uh, put it on top of my tool bag and not have to worry about it just taking up some enormous amount of space. I'm six feet tall. It has enough room for me. And with all of my other gear stacked in my tent, it creates a pretty comfortable situation. I differ a little bit from Scotty, Aaron, and other people in the fact that I don't carry a very large tent. Um, I just feel that after all my life experience, I don't necessarily need it, and I'm not living on it like in the tent full time on the road. So a small tent works really good for me when I'm going to rallies. These are all the stakes, uh, paracords, some other things. I normally keep it outside of the tent bag just because it's that big. It doesn't take up much space. Now, this is an optional piece of equipment that I find to be pretty enjoyable, and that is this little camp chair. This camp chair is literally a generic brand camp chair that you can buy at Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop. It doesn't matter. It's a really good piece of gear to have because, you know, when you come in and you're tired from having rode all day or whatever, and you go into camp and set up your little chair and kick back. Not that it's any different than really sitting on the ground, but I don't really like being dirty that much. And so it's good to have a chair where you're elevated and up and out of the ground. Now, this of course is the stock 
Shoey helmet bag. Always carry that. Not only to carry the helmet, but for other things that you might need. You never know. It's like a little backpack. Again, other people in the military may notice this. It's a Shamog. I carry one of these just because it's, it's one of those things where you never know what kind of weather you're going to encounter. And whether it's heavy rain or stuff gets cold or whatever, you wrap it around your neck and it's a it's a neck gaiter that again, I don't have any money in. Uh, it was something I was given in my travels and so uh, always something I carry with me. Although sometimes I've walked into a gas station and you know got some looks from people, but you know, who cares what they think? Anyways, next biggest thing. I use these two bungee cords and this waterproof bag to hold my sleep system. Now I'm not going to take a sleep system out, but I have a three piece military sleeping bag. It's literally the same stock sleeping bag that everybody in the army and I'm pretty sure the Marine Corps is issued the very similar bag, but it's in a cinch sack on the inside cinch down really tight. And I use one of these waterproof bags and what I do is I sit this where the passenger would be on my bike and take these two bungee cords from the passenger handholds up over the top and to the other passenger handhold in an X formation. This gives me a good backrest and it enables me to lean back along the ride and not really uh, experience any kind of discomfort. At that point, it really is like riding a couch. Very comfortable, you're locked in, you know, really good piece of gear. You know, knock on wood, I've never had the bag on the inside get wet. This is very waterproof and it works really good. It's a piece of gear that not only uh, Scotty and Aaron have used, but it's a piece of gear that, you know, I found proved tried and true during my military experience. All right, your bungee cords, just any automotive bungee cord. Now, this is a piece of gear I carry that depending on what state you're in, I don't, I don't really know what the regs on it are. I have a tiny Ontario machete that I just throw on my tour pack. And the reason being is, is if you're camping in the woods or some mess, you don't know when you're gonna need to chop something. You don't know when you're gonna have like a campfire or something like that. So it's a really good piece of gear to have and I picked it up for $10 at a flea market. So again, it was inexpensive because I didn't buy it new and uh it serves its purpose but i find that i don't use this a lot of time but because it's flat and it literally takes up zero space in the tour pack uh i don't worry about it too much it just kind of sits in there this is a sheepskin and a lot of people wonder why are you using an animal skin john well i'll tell you why because what a lot of people don't realize is instead of going out and spending like a thousand dollars on a seat you can throw this bad boy over the top and it's it's pretty comfortable you know it uh it keeps you from getting real sweaty and uh it, it's just a good piece of gear to have on your seat because it's white it reflects the sun so the seat doesn't get too terrible hot when this is on there even if you leave it out in direct sunlight for hours at a time so uh, it's a good piece of gear to have. Uh, I've never had anyone try and take it just because it's really dirty and it doesn't smell too great. But uh, if you roll it up, it also makes a pretty good pillow. And uh, people may think that's kind of nuts, but that's what I use it for. So it's a good piece of gear to have. I bought this section for $50 and I have used this half of the sheepskin on my uh, bagger for as long as I've owned it. The section that I used to have on my dyno was completely thrashed after having it for about a year. So uh, I'm, I'm on the verge of throwing it in the garbage. The last piece of gear we're going to talk about is the one that takes up the most space. And uh, I'm going to try and figure out how I'm going to tie this one out. But I'd really like to take it this year. That is the Pendleton Wool Blanket. Now people may ask, okay, John, 
Why do you carry a Pendleton wool blanket? Again, weather is completely unpredictable. And in the inside of the tent, if you fold this up to the dimensions of the tent, because it's a very large blanket, uh, it makes a good pad to put everything down on. The way I normally layer it, I'll put the wool blanket down, I'll take the sleep system, and I'll lay the cold weather bag on the bottom, and then uh, the, the bivy sack, if it's expected to get wet, I put the waterproof bag on the very bottom, and then this wool blanket, then the cold weather bag, and I use the medium weather bag just essentially as a throw, and I, and I go to sleep that way. There have been times that I've camped at higher elevations. Uh, there's a video I have called the tower at 10,000 feet. And I camped out there one night and that was north of Rio Doso, New Mexico. And I used this wool blanket and had I not had it, I'd have, I'd have froze pretty bad out there. Um, I didn't carry my sleep system with me that day. I was very ill prepared. I had, uh, I had a uh, Wooby, which is a, a military blanket that you get issued. I had a poncho and a few other things. And I picked up this wool blanket. And uh, had I not had it, it probably would have been a really bad time. One other thing I want to go into just before I'm done is uh, what I carry in my little GoPro sack. We got a charger with the block down here. And I normally carry about three batteries. I keep everything self-contained in this and we're good to go. Now, when it comes down to uh, personal hygiene stuff, I have a personal hygiene bag that I'm not gonna go through because all the items are specific to me and you might have other items that you need, but keeping it in a self-contained bag, that way you can just pull it out is the biggest thing to me. You need to be able to pull it out real quick, pitch it where it needs to go, have everything that you can bagged. It makes everything easier. And uh, one of the last things that I wanna talk about is the pla placement of necessary documents, your registration, uh, your insurance card, all that. If you don't keep it on your person, keep it somewhere that's readily accessible. Uh, it just makes the trip a lot easier. And uh, if, if you're put in a situation where you have to produce those documents, you have them on hand. So this is just a few of the particular things I use. I don't really carry a computer with me or anything like that. I do carry tools, but like I said, everybody's, everybody's individual kit as far as tools go is completely different. Like my bike's fuel injected and has a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, modern, modern equipment on it because it's a 2012, so odds are if something did happen that isn't something mechanically related like to the clutch or to bolts or something like that, it's probably not something I'm going to be able to fix on the side of the road. Like it's probably going to end up being towed somewhere. I do carry a tire plug kit and uh, it's just a standard tire plug kit. It's nothing special. Although I do carry uh, CO2 cartridges to fill the tire until I can get somewhere that has air. I do not carry an air compressor, which is something I might do in the future. I don't know. Kit changes as experience changes, and everybody knows this. It doesn't matter whether you're a hiker or whether you're in the military, whatever it is, kit changes over time. And it changes to the demands of whatever you're doing. So whether you're riding to Sturgis or just 100 miles away, everybody's kit's gonna be completely different. But I hope you guys enjoyed this view of what I'll be carrying to Sturgis. And with that one, I'll catch y'all in Sturgis, South Dakota. Thanks, y'all.